share with us a little bit of the history of what Christ has been doing in the hyper community, Christian. Good morning. What a sad day. Most of us probably never imagined that they would ever witness the gradual closure of one striving out to worship. The last few weeks in the long life of a church that has served generations of believers and served them well. And what's more, we are not only closing PG chaplain weeks to come, we are writing the very last chapter in the long history of American religious life in Heidelberg, Germany, a town that has been home to hundreds of thousands of Americans since World War II. Let us use this solemn moment to recall a few religious milestones of the past 68 years. American troops entered Heidelberg on 30 March 1945, Good Friday of that year. On the following Easter Sunday, U.S. Army chaplains held field services all over town, attended by weary troops in battle gear, stopping for a few moments of worship and prayer before resuming their advance that would ultimately lead to the defeat of Nazi Germany. Many of these services were held under chaotic conditions in barns, factories, school buildings, or in one of Heidelberg's German churches. The immediate post-war years saw American religious life in Heidelberg focusing on a small chapel on Nachrichten Kasern, a former movie theater on Patton Barracks, and a number of German churches in town, including St. Anne's, St. Ignatius, today's Jesuit Church, and Harlan's Church. Used by both American and German congregations, these church buildings served as valuable hubs for American life in post-war Heidelberg and provided platforms where American and German worshipers could meet, interact, share faith, learn about each other, and forge friendships. As the number of service members and civilians increased in the wake of the Korean War, the decision was reached to build two large American housing areas in Heidelberg that would later be known as Mark Twain Village, MTV, and Patrick Henry Village, PHV. To meet the spiritual needs of a growing military population, chapels were included in both housing areas designed by Mannheim architect Emil Serini. Serini's blueprints resulted in two American-looking, multi-purpose chapels that could serve both Christian and Jewish congregations and provide an ample room for small group activities. MTV Chapel was consecrated in 1951, followed by PHB Chapel in 1955. During those same years, two more chapels were added on Captain Tompkins Barracks to serve smaller congregations and single service members in both facilities, so that along with Nottingham Chapel, the community now had a total of two large and three small chapels to serve, a, to, to develop a plentiful and vibrant spiritual life. And plentiful and vibrant, this spiritual life was indeed. Women's activities already begun in 1955 as CWOC and PWOC shared the chapels and their activities groups with Bible study groups, youth groups, drama groups, choirs, handout choirs, and countless other religiously inspired activities. MTV and PHV chapel became places where babies were baptized, where young people confirmed their faith and received communion where a couple is married and matured in Christ. Of course, Heidelberg chapels also served as houses of consolation in times of grief and sorrow, when relationship problems or the loss of a loved one would cast dark shadows over the lives of people in the community. They provided hope and fellowship when deployments put service members and their families under stress. They served as much-needed gathering points for the community during those trying weeks after 9-11 or after the horrible terrorist attack on Capitol Barracks in 1972 that killed three service members. And they became houses where Americans and people of other nationalities would worship side by side. In fact, as the years went by, American congregations in town developed numerous ways of helping German neighbors to meet and share American spirituality. Congregations would collect toys for German orphanages and hold offertories for German charities. American church choirs would visit German nursing homes during the Christmas season to spread the good news of Christ's birth and bring a moment of joy to the frail, ailing, and helpless. German congregations were regularly invited by their American neighbors to join Easter Sunday sunrise services. 
1962, one such service on Heidelberg's hiding back attracted no fewer than 3,500 German and American worshippers. No doubt, American congregations in Heidelberg, Germany, and their numerous outreach activities were presented America at its very best. So again, what a sad, what a heartbreaking day. We lose our house of worship, the opportunity to fellowship with one another, a world-class team of chaplains and spiritual leaders, a dedicated staff, an outstanding team of volunteers, and I would like to emphasize the most marvelous music ministry. We depart from a truly blessed place, a place where the Holy Spirit dwells, a place that is God's indeed. But let's not forget that as we close the final chapter of American religious life in Heidelberg, we don't leave empty-handed. We remember grand Christmas and Easter cantatas, powerful renditions of Handel's Messiah, prepared by the legendary Ed Madison, uplifting gospel concerts, Christmas candlelight services, Christmas tree lighting ceremonies, Easter egg hunts, vacation Bible schools, national prayer breakfasts, and revivals. We remember guest speakers who came to enrich our spiritual experience. Potlucks, barbecues, boat rides, retreats, Bible study groups, and numerous other activities that helped deepen Christian relationship and gave new relationships and gave new a chance to link up to the community. And of course, vibrant youth ministries that prepared future generations for their own Christian walk. Despite our sadness on this day, it is therefore appropriate to close with John chapter 14, verse 2. There are many rooms in my father's house, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. God will indeed take care of us as we leave Heidelberg, settle down in new communities, and join in new congregations. Regardless of the imponderabilities of transition, we won't be lost. There will be a room in God's house for each and every one of us. The locations and pews may change, but MTV Chapel, PHB Chapel, and all other Heidelberg houses of worship will remain in our hearts forever. And as we bid farewell in coming days and weeks and say goodbye, let's not forget that semantically, goodbye is a short version of God be with you. May God be with you all. May God bless America. Thank you.
you know, we're not saying good enough, bye, but we're, uh, we're saying God with you. And uh, this will live in our hearts, and I hope that each of us keeps contact with other people. Uh, wherever you go, uh, God will bless you. And I was just thinking, as a, as a fan, let's give the uh, praise band a hand because they're doing it. church 
based on our Christian denomination? Do we choose our church home based on the service structure, meaning whether it's formal or informal, more relaxed environment? Uh, what about the type of worship? Should we go to the gospel service? Should we go to the contemporary service? Or what about a service that conducts hymns? Then there's always the size of the church. Big churches can offer a wide variety of ministries and programs, while smaller churches can be more intimate. All the great things for us to consider, but here is what sealed the deal for us. We asked ourselves two very important questions. Where does God want us to serve? And what are our beliefs? We wanted to understand the church's thoughts and beliefs, and, and in short, we wanted to attend and serve in a Bible-based church. And as you can see here on the mission statement, you can take a moment to read <coughs> what we stand for here at PHB Chapel. As you seek the Lord's direction as you all depart here today and within the next few weeks, he would give you wisdom to know where he wants you to fellowship. We are truly honored and blessed to have served with each of you in this Bible-based service over the past three plus years. We grew in our Christian walk while enjoying the sermons. Again, throwbacks, some names for you. Uh, Mike Griffin, Jason Duckworth, Cherry Hayes, Mike Brainer, Tim Meadows, Pete Brzezinski, Ralph Began, and then our current uh, chaplains that attend here, uh, led by Chaplain Hart and Chaplain Dave, Chaplain Moran, Chaplain Wisdom, Chaplain Johnson, Roberts, Dean, Ireland, Cameron, and just a host of folks. Scripture tells us in 1 Peter 4, chapter 10 through 13, 11 verse, as each one of us has received a special gift, employed in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Whoever speaks, let him speak as it were the utterance of God. Whoever serves, let him do so by the strength which God supplies, so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom blessings, the glory, and dominion forever and ever. 